Senator Sinema has joined us, and you're recognized, please. Seven minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to the witnesses for being here today. Yesterday, this committee heard from Secretary Mayorkas regarding the DHS plan for handling the expected influx of migrants. I have not heard the detail I need to be confident in the government's plan. In order to meet this moment, DHS needs to be able to share operational details regarding how they plan to move migrants through the processing system in a manner that will keep Arizona communities safe and treat migrants fairly and humanely. So Ms. Tierney, Arizona communities, NGOs, and local and federal law enforcement officers have been struggling to keep up with the flow of migrants for years. Yesterday, Secretary Mayorkas indicated that work to get resources on the ground in Arizona are well underway. I've not yet received specific details that allow me to be confident the government will be prepared. On which date will Arizona border sectors have all the necessary resources, including sufficient infrastructure, transportation, and staffing, to implement the administration's plan and avoid further burdening Arizona's local communities? Thank you for that, that question, Senator. Um, so what I want to do is talk a little bit about the three lines of effort that you referenced. Um, the first thing I want to discuss is personnel. We are in the process of moving additional law, federal law enforcement officers across the southwest border to include Arizona, in particular the Yuma and Tucson sectors, which, as you know, have seen substantial increases in migration flows. Uh, there's also an effort to provide civilian contract processing staff, in particular to Yuma. That will allow Border Patrol agents to then go back out on the line. Um, and then the, the third piece is the medical piece to plus up the medical resources in Arizona as well. That is a mix of interagency support and contracting support that is online and coming online with the goal of having things in place uh, prior to May 23rd. So that's for personnel. The second piece is transportation. So Customs and Border Protection has undertaken several efforts to address transportation, in particular air and ground transport. This, again, is a mix of interagency agreements and contracts. Uh, one of the biggest uh, pieces of air transport is an interagency agreement with ICE to use their air transport to move uh, migrants either laterally or uh, to, to decompress the stations, in particular, again, with, I'll focus on Yuma because that is with a consistently overcapacity sector in the Border Patrol Southwest Border System. Uh, also, ground transport. Currently, CBP has the capacity to move about 4,900 people a day. That is being plussed up to be almost 9,000 people per day, again, through a mix of interagency agreements and contracts. The one I'll particularly note is a blanket purchase agreement that was awarded on April 29th, and task orders are already being issued against that based on sector requirements. Uh, I also want to note a part of that blanket purchase agreement includes contract security guard services. This is important because a lot of the things that Border Patrol agents do while people are in holding, don't have to be done by Border Patrol agents. And so swapping out contract security services for a Border Patrol agent will allow those agents to go back out on the line. So that's another part of that blanket purchase agreement. Again, task orders are being issued against that right now. Um, and then the last thing is facilities. There has been a plus up in holding capacity across the southwest border. Uh, previously, it was uh, about thir uh, 13,000. Now, uh, as of today, it's 17,161. And on May 23rd, there will be additional 500 uh, soft side facility holding spaces available in Del Rio, Texas. I know not specifically to Yuma uh, or Tucson, Arizona, but you have to think about this kind of a system where there's an opportunity to, to do lateral movements to decompress overcrowded stations. So uh, just to, in closing, again, things are in place now. Things are coming online with the goal of having uh, more resources available on May 23rd, but additional capability to scale up after May 23rd based on actual flows. I appreciate what you just said, but to be clear, we've read all of this in, in your report. So what I'm asking for are specific details regarding Arizona, telling me what's happening in Texas and saying that you can move people from Arizona to Texas doesn't actually solve the problem. Do you have specific Arizona details? Uh, I have I have top line details here. I do not have specific Arizona details, but we can certainly get you that offline. I, I do want to note again, it's a system. And so Yuma... Tucson are a part of a network of sectors on the southwest border, and I do encourage you to look at the whole system, not just specifically what's in Arizona, in particular with holding capacity, because that's where the uh, air and ground transport uh, contracts and plussing up those contracts will help with the lateral decompression. 
I appreciate that. As you are aware, we've had significant problems with transport in Arizona already with continuing concerns around migrants showing up at the Sky Harbor Airport, for instance, without appropriate travel plans. And airport personnel have been taken away from their duties of helping passengers get safely from one destination to another to provide assistance to migrants. As you mentioned before the hearing, some of that has been alleviated. It has not been solved. It doesn't sound like there is a very specific plan with actionable items to address this prior to March, uh, May 23rd. Well, Senator, I do want to, uh, since you, uh, thank you for that uh, comment and question. I do want to highlight some of the things that have happened and specifically around the Sky Harbor Airport, which I know is a particular pain point for the airport, the county, and, and something that you've raised multiple times. Uh, our lead field coordinator, which is the senior CBP official on the ground in, in Arizona, has convened uh, detailed operational discussions with both the jurisdiction in which Sky Harbor Airport is, as well as the airport, to discuss how they can better coordinate their actions. And from that, a few things have happened. The first one is the identification of a site for drop-offs that's not specific to the airport, working with the primary NGO that provides the the drop-off services there. There's also been work with TSA to discuss security clearance processes to ensure that people who do arrive have the right documentation and that TSA has access to the right system so that they can properly screen people without delay, avoiding people missing their flight and then having to be stuck at the airport for several hours or a day or two. Another issue is ticketing. And so the lead field coordinator has convened discussions with both Southwest Airlines and uh, I believe it was United Airlines, to discuss how to better coordinate ticketing as well as moving people through the airport to their, to their gate. So there are things that have been done tactically to address these issues. And as we discussed before the hearing, and as I will highlight here, is it completely solved? No, it is not. But there are a lot of things in process and also completed to have alleviated some of the issues. I do want to note, though, there is, as we discussed it before the hearing, a limit to what we can do because once people are processed out of CBP custody, the federal government has few levers to actually provide support. And so there is a lot of coordination that will have to happen between CBP, the non-governmental organizations, the local officials, and entities like the Sky Harbor Airport to ensure that we can move people through the system and avoid some of the pain points that you have highlighted previously. Mr. Chair, I know that my time has expired. Might I be able to ask one additional question? Absolutely. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, so my next question is for Mr. Nunez Neto. Um, street releases are not new to Arizona communities. For years, I've been working with Arizona's local mayors and our counties to help relieve the burden caused by these street releases. The DHS plan indicates that there is defined criteria in place, which our local CBP officers will use to determine whether and how to perform street releases in particular communities. So what is the criteria that DHS is utilizing to make these decisions about street releases, and what steps will be taken to minimize the burden that's placed on Arizona communities in the case of street releases? Thank you, Senator. And I'd welcome also uh, Chief Huffman's views on this. You know, we are working hard to minimize the potential for uh, street releases. We acknowledge that they have happened, you know, really consistently over the years when particular parts of the border um, become overstretched. We have put guidelines in place. We'd be happy to share you with you, you know, more detailed information on that. Um, you know, I think in general, the, the safety of the community and public safety is kind of the North Star in this space. And we try to ensure, you know, if there is a need uh, to release migrants that we do so, as Marianne noted, uh, in direct coordination with local NGOs and local authorities in order to make sure that they have somewhere to go and a place to sleep. Chief Huffman, I don't know if you want to add anything to that. Well, I just concur with what you, do I have time to go answer the question? I just concur with what uh, uh, Mr. Nieto uh, answered, that the uh, local uh, CBP officials and local, they work closely with the local officials. They understand the stress that burdens it, but as, C as we all know, CBP is just the, the first step and when you encounter somebody and once the systems just get so strange, sometimes you have to make the choices of those, of those releases. And so when you have to do so, you do so in coordination with, 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 with the NGOs if they're available in general or, and make sure you're in coordination with your state and locals. But uh, and, and, as obviously we'd like to not have any street leads if we could avoid it at all. 
Mr. Thank Chairman, I know you. my time's expired. I just will note that there have been repeated stories in Arizona, including the mayor of a small town in Arizona called Gila Bend, in which there are no shelters and no bus stops. That mayor was actually transporting migrants himself to the Phoenix area because of street releases that were unplanned and unannounced. So I have grave concern that this will continue to be a burden on local Arizona communities. Additionally, leaving migrants without any place to go, without safe harbor, particularly as uh, summer temperatures rise over 110 in southern Arizona. Mr. Chairman, I have an additional 12 questions that I'll submit for the record, and I'm interested um, in hearing a lot more about these plans. As of this moment, I do not feel confident that um, the system is ready for this mass migration that could occur as early as May 23rd. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Sinema.